Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me, Patrick Gnarly. Once again, we are going to be doing guitar lessons. And uh, if you have any questions, if you want to know anything, uh, if there's anything, a song, if there's a technique, anything you can think of that you would like to uh, get involved with for with me, uh, let me know. Uh, right now, we've got three people in the chat. And I'm so always shocked. I'm always shocked at how few people show up for the free guitar lessons. Like, because so many people get their lessons and stuff. Maybe it's because I don't post it on the disc, uh, not the Discord. Maybe it's because I don't post it on the TikTok too much. But, you know, maybe I'll, I'll have to. But, but uh, everybody, we got Everett, we got Jarvis, we got Sid. Does anybody have a question? Does anyone have a question to get us started off? Or do you guys want me to just go into uh, some lesson kind of stuff? Everett says, uh, Everett says they're fine. Jarvis says nothing for me. Uh, Sid is typing, so we'll see what Sid has to say. Uh, it doesn't have to be today, but in one of your lessons, you should show how to replace a string if you haven't already. That's not a bad idea. I'm not, I'm not upset by that idea. Um... I will say it's a lot easier than you think. There's a couple different ways to do it, but that has more to do with tying the string right up here. We could we can do that. We can do that. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, yeah, let me do that right now. Let me get a different guitar real quick. Uh, for those of you watching at home, you might have to wait for a second so you can skip ahead. But yeah, yeah. Let me just let me just go do it right now. Yeah, give me one second. You guys know how to change strings, all that stuff. Let me get a let me get a different guitar real quick. So I got another strap here. I'm gonna put it right here. I got another string right here. Give me one second. Just gonna get my wire cutters. Here we go. Whoops. Got that, that falls out. Now at least. All right. So I've got with me two items that'll help with the uh, with the uh, guitar changing, guitar string changing. So for those of you at home, we're gonna learn how to change a guitar string. Now again, there's a couple different ways to do this, but there are some things that are kind of non-negotiable. You need to have something. So. I'm gonna show you the first thing. The first thing you need is wire cutters, just like these. So if you don't have a set of wire cutters, uh, the idea is, is that it's gonna be impossible to make sure it looks neat and it doesn't poke you. Because a lot of times, if you just wind the string and you just leave it sticking out, I have a perfect prop for this. Like this one, I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a string right here, see it? sticking out of this guitar and you can poke yourself with that and it's not fun. So you wanna get wire cutters. So let's go ahead and change your string. I need to do that anyways. This is a guitar I bought as a replacement recently. So uh, let's just get started. So the idea is, is when you pop a string on a Strat specifically, oh, this is nice. This is a great prop too because you can see the back of the guitar. This guitar has what's called a tremolo so the idea is, see how this thing moves? See how it's going wee wee wee? On the front, this thing, let me plug this in. You should be able to hear that. When you, when you break a string on a Strat or something that has a tremolo, like a whammy bar, watch this. See how this lifts up? 
and it goes that is this thing moving see so the string goes through this but accidentally bonk my guitar so the string goes through this out the top and then all the way up here isn't that interesting so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop a string real quick watch this just like that I, oh no I broke a string oh no what do I do the string is gone so if you see right here there's a piece of the string sticking out here and the rest of the string is wound up up here see it the string is just kind of sitting up there dangling around so here's what you do you broke a string you got to take this one out so we'll just show you both sides of this see how it's sticking through you have to take this out I've seen people break strings and they forget to take the ball end this is called the ball end they forget to take that out and then for some reason their string gets stuck and they're like I can't get the string out it's because you didn't remove the ball end sometimes it does get stuck in there and you can't push it through like this you can't push it through so what you can do is you can get this other tool I have these are called Allen wrenches so the idea is you break a string you can just get one of the thin Allen wrenches or the Allen keys like this one this one's really thin and you can just push it through like that boom it comes loose just like that so that's not what these are for but you can use this to help that out that's not why I brought these though anyways so, okay oh you know bro you broke a string okay whatever see so take the ball end out they call it the ball end because there's a little kind of ball at the end very 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 aptly named and then you've got the actual guitar string right here the whole the rest of it and so what you're gonna do is unwind it and be careful just so you guys know when you unwind it what can happen is is that this little part here is sharp if you unwind it and pull it it can poke your hand which kind of sucks it's not great it's not gonna happen every time but if you're yanking on it and you, you know you leave a lot of slack it can like smack your finger and it's like ugh. so anyways so what I like to do yeah see what I mean Jarvis knows what I mean so what I like to do with these guys is I just put them into a circle like that you wrap it around your hand and then when you get like a nice little ring I don't know if you guys can see that see the nice ring what you can do now is you can take one of the sides and just push it through once or twice and then boom you get a nice little little wrapped up one. You can throw it in the trash. I wish there was like a recycling company for this because this is a lot of nickel. There's a lot of nickel and a lot of steel in this. I think there's a lot of money you could make from recycling strings. Anyways, um, so now we have one less string. So now I have my string that I'm going to use. You can see this is a 38. This is a very thin string, but I like thin strings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out of the packaging, unwind it, Notice I'm looking away because you don't want to have it whoosh, poke you in the eye. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go through the back, just like so, through the front, and it's going to come through. Whoosh, pull through just like that. Now it is locked in place. Now here's the part where everybody gets a little confused and it's a little different for everybody. So if you notice up here, look at this camera, up here there is a tuning peg right this is the thing that winds up and all that stuff you do want to make sure that it is tight these the nut the, the little nut right here is tight enough because sometimes that can be kind of annoying but the idea is is uh it's gonna be a little loose a little floppy but that's okay you want to pull the string through and then what I like to do is do what's called a pre-wrap some people do this a different a couple different ways but I just wrap it twice just like that you're keeping tension on it so that way it doesn't do this you got to keep tension on it and notice how this is bent now see how this is bent Let's see if you guys can see that see how that's bent that's forever if you put a kink or a bent um a bend in the string it's now bent like there's no going back so anyways so you uh tighten that so what I mean by that is let's say you accidentally bend the string or kink the string up here somewhere in the middle that's gonna mess up the string so 
Anyways, so we got that. See how this is nice and taut? You're gonna push down with your finger on the string so that the string goes down under the hole. So it's just like that. See how it's kind of in place? Oh, well, you can see that. See how my fingernail is pushing down on the string? So the idea is, is now you can just put this end of the string through the hole all the way through, pull it through, where it's nice and taut. And now the string, when you tune it, it's going to go up, but the top part of the string is going to block it. It's pretty easily, pretty easily. So now you can tighten it. And you're going to notice that this thing's going to like go wang, 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 and it's going to kink, 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 kink. It's, hear it? It's like stretching. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten the string out right here, straighten it out. So that way when I go to cut it with the wire cutters, you want to use the flat side, if you can see this. See how there's two sides? See how this is like flush? And then this side has like an indent. I can put my finger in there. This one you can't. You want to have the flush side towards the tuning peg, that way you can get as close as you can to cutting it. So watch this. I'll try and get this camera for you. See you got the tuning peg right there, the string. It's all pressing, all the, the wraps are going that way. So let me see if I can show you that. See all the strings are underneath the hole? All those wraps? The person who strung this before me is an idiot. Because you see these parts? These are sticking out. That means they do not know how to use a wire cutter. Can you guys see that? See how all the strings are just kind of like poking out? You don't want that. This one is poking out real far. You want to get the wire cutter, flush side, the flat side, as close as you can to it and snip it. That way, there's almost no material sticking out. There's almost nothing there. So it's very hard to poke your finger. These ones, those are little needles that will destroy your hand. These things will poke your finger, and you're going to be like, oh, God, ah, oh, and it's horrible. You don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire cutter. I'm going to cut those. Those are essentially needles. I mean, they are. So you do not want that metal sticking out. See what I mean? There's different di people that are people that do this do it differently every time. See, now that has a very, very low chance of poking my finger. This guy did this with a psychopath. But some people do that. I don't know why, but some people do that. So you don't want those sticking out. But now, after only what? 10 minutes, we now have a string. That's in tune. Now be warned, be warned. This string is gonna continue to stretch the metal is not like a perfect, like it's not like concrete or something where it'll chip away or something, but it stays in place. Metal can bend. We've all had like an aluminum, like Coke can or something. When you're done drinking it, you go, Ugh! the metal can bend. So the idea is as the stretches, you'll lose tuning. Watch this. I'll, I'll make a great, great point. Watch this. I'm gonna bend the string a bunch of times. Now watch. Oh, mysterious, it's out of tune now. A lot of uh, guitar techs, what they'll do is they'll pre-stretch the guitar string. I think that helps. You don't have to do that, it will stretch anyways. But watch this. We'll do it again. Just put some uh, tension on it. And do it again. I'm at the 12th fret doing this, so you get a nice a lot, of, a lot of tension. You can move up to anything. Move up here, move down here. As long as you're getting the string to stretch.
and basically it's just going to go slightly out of tune for a little bit after that and then you're okay that is how you change a string now i brought these out these are the allen wrenches the allen keys the reason i did this is because there are some things you kind of have to do sometimes now i put a lower string on here a lighter string so the idea is is that sometimes when you change string gauge like let's say you go from nines to tens or you go from nines to eights like I did. See this thing down here, this bridge, this big piece of metal? The idea is, is watch this. If you don't have this set up well, you gotta get this Allen key right here, the thin one. I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna lower it till it, it's bad. All right, now I'm gonna put it back to tension. You hear it going Wah. That's called fret buzz. That means the bridge or the neck, is the neck isn't straight or the bridge saddle's too low. So the idea is, is to fix that. It's a Again, and that's not as bad as it could be. We can make it worse. Let's make it awful. That sucks. All right, so we're going to raise the bridge saddle with the Allen key. Notice the tuning changes, right? Because the string is being stretched a little bit, this bridge saddle is going up. So that means the string is going right? So tension, guitar string, all it's all about tension. It's all a balancing act. So if one thing gets tightened, that means the string has to compensate. So that means tighter string means higher pitch, right? Ooh, li listen to that. Let's see what's out of tune. Hold on. Oh, yeah, they're all out of tune now. Because this uh, this E string is really thin, so there's less tension on the whole neck and the bridge. So but that's okay. Now it sounds fine. So that is how you adjust the bridge saddle. That is how you change the string. And you got to tune up. Make sure you're in tune. Remember, stretch that string out. Um, does that help you out? Did you get everything you needed? Does that help you both out? I think that's a good, uh, that's a good explanation. this guitar I'm pretty sure these are custom shop string or uh, custom shop pickups but I might be wrong I don't know they sound good the bridge pickups a little weak though so that's like mm, I don't know neck pickups always sound good all right we are 20 minutes into our lesson so I guess I'll just talk about something that's important uh, this will actually help out for the most part for uh, for a lot of people I'm going to teach you guys how to take the neck off of a guitar if it's like a Fender bolt-on style neck like this. Would you guys like to see me perform guitar surgery? I think that'd be a cool idea. Have you? Has anybody in here ever removed the neck? Has anyone done that yet? It's kind of scary. You've never even had a guitar. Sid, you don't have a guitar? You're just hanging out? 
It's okay if you are. I just find that fascinating. I mean, it is helpful, but like, yeah, you'll 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 notice that uh, when you get a guitar, a lot of it's gonna feel very alien, very foreign. You're like, I don't know what this is. I don't know how I'm doing this. Man, I'm shocked. Well, it is it is uh, the day we're not really supposed to be having guitar lessons, so it's whatever. But that's okay. I was like, where is everybody? Anyways, um, all right, so I will perform a guitar surgery on this because I want to know what pickups are on this guitar. So uh, here's what I'm going to do, you guys. I'm going to see if I can get one of these cameras to face the way I want it to. So I'm going to move my keyboard. I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. Move all these cards that are dumb. Put those over there. Push everything back a little bit. Put this back, and then I will have a little space for us to look at the uh, the insides of the guitar and stuff. So let me put this right here. I'm going to unplug it. I want to see if these are the stock pickups or something. Because they feel, or they, they look like they're not stock, but they might not be, so I don't know. So I'm going to move uh, one of these cameras so we can see better. Let me see something here. I'm going to move this camera. That's gone. Add uh, camera, video capture device. Okay. Let's see here. Should be the green screen one. Did this just freeze? Dude, why are you frozen? Okay, there we go. I think this is the 1080p Pro Stream. Okay, let's see if this works. Where'd it go? Why can't I see it? Okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, let me just turn this off real quick. Then we'll go back to this. Deactivate, activate. This doesn't make sense. I just want to use this camera, please. All right, I'm going to delete this. Remove, yes. And then, sorry everybody watching at home, this is boring, but I'm trying to get this camera working for you guys. Yep, six. It's going to freeze for a second, I guess. I don't know why this isn't working. Why don't you want to work? Why is it so small? Okay, I guess that camera's not working or something. I don't know. All right, so we're not going to worry about that. Remove. I'm just going to take this camera and tilt it down a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing a little better. All right, that wasn't so bad. All right. Does anybody want to guess? Does anybody want to guess? And I'm going to turn that other camera back on. Nah, I'm, not, I'm actually not going to. Uh, does anybody want to guess what, uh, what tool I'm going to use to take the neck off? I'll let you guys guess. That's right, everybody. We're going to use a gun. No, I'm kidding. It's a drill. You get a drill with a uh, Phillips head. A Phillips head is the one that like makes a cross. You want to get a drill because this is a very annoying process. So I'm going to teach you some stuff real quick on how to uh, take the neck off of a guitar. It's pretty easy. So these are designed so that you can take stuff off at a moment's notice with hand tools. You don't need to have a drill, but a drill is much better. So what you're gonna need though, are two things. 
You want a nice clear space, which this is not, but for the sake of this video, you want to get a table, like a kitchen table or a countertop, somewhere where it's just clear of obstruction. You want to have a nice amount of space. I have one over there, but the camera can't reach that area, so I can't do it. But you want to support the neck. You want to have something underneath the neck to make sure it doesn't move. So what I'm going to use is what I have right over here. I'm going to move some stuff real quick. I have a nice soft thing of Velcro, which it'll just rest on. So that way it's not like resting on the headstock or anything like that. A lot of Gibsons real quick. See how the headstock is tilted backwards? It's like, not every, every guitar is like that. A lot of guitars are like that, but most, if it's like a Fender style, watch this. See how it's not tilted back? See how it's just straight? It's kind of recessed. It's like backwards, but it's not tilted. Isn't that interesting? So if you have a guitar and you're laying it down and the neck is like, like that, it'll be laying on the headstock, which could snap it. I'll give you another example. This guitar has the six in line tuners, just like a Fender, but look, the headstock is also not straight. It's angled. So you don't want to let it rest on that. Otherwise it'll like, it could snap. You don't want to do that. So get something so that it's sitting on the neck right up here or something. So that way it's like this and not like this. See what I mean? Yeah, make sure that is not resting on that. So whenever you're laying it down like that, just have it let rest on the neck. Really, you want it to have pretty close, like right there, but, you know, it's okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is two things. I'm not going to replace all the strings right now because that's annoying and it'll take forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a capo, and you're going to put the capo on right up here in the first fret. You can put it on the first fret. I've seen people put it all the way up here, behind the nut. I usually put it on the first fret, right there. That way, when I loosen the strings, the strings don't dislocate from the tuners, which can happen, especially with vintage style guitars. So watch this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower all the tuning. I know I have the capo on. The capo's gonna kinda make it a little difficult, so I'm gonna take it off, but. So you're gonna make these spaghetti. All the strings are become spaghetti. And the reason we're doing this is if we did not detune the instrument, the moment we took the neck off, it would go, wham! It would fly off. Because all that tension, remember? All the tension from the strings is pulling. It's constantly pulling. So we got the capo on. So the strings are going nowhere, bud. And now we're going to get these four bolts off the back of the neck. So got our drill. We're going to set it to loosen. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So we're just gonna stick it in here and that's it. Watch this. That's one. That's two. That's three. And now guess what? This neck is no longer attached to the body. We got the neck plate. That comes off. Boom! Look at that. It comes right off. Isn't that crazy? Now you can see Fender stamps their neck pockets. This is stamped 2000, oh, it's one ABR. I don't know what ABR. It should be April or something, but yeah. And then it has 2000. I think it's 2008 because the neck is from 2008. The serial number says 2008. So yeah, you can just take it right off. You can also see there's pencil. There's pencil in this. Isn't that fascinating? Yep, there's just pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that off. And now we have a body. 
And what you can do, like I said, if you have a countertop, you could just lay this like that. You really want to keep somewhat tension on this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the neck off. I'm just going to like lay it. Eh, I don't think I can do it like that. I need to use my table. And then I'm going to move my screws. You always want to put your screws into something like a cup or something like that. That way you don't lose them. I have a little cup off to the side. You can't see it. Also, I'm not lying. And there you go. Look at that. You took the neck off. Now, you're probably thinking, Pat, why would I ever need to take the neck off? This seems like really ridiculous. Here's why you need to take the neck off. So if you want to preserve the strings that are on it already, right? You know what? I'm just going to move some of this stuff out of the way real quick. If you want to take the neck off, but you want to not restring it and all that stuff, you're more than welcome to see how the strings are there. Now you can check out the pickups on this guitar just to see what's in it. But this time, I don't, I'm not going to use a drill. I'm going to use just a regular old screwdriver. So we got the neck, we got the body. I'm just going to take these uh, screws off. You can see all these screws. Move this camera a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Sorry, I just dropped something. <laughs> see that there are these little screws here? So the idea is you just take a screwdriver, plop it right there, and bingo, look at that. And remember, you want to have something like a cup or a, a, a little thing you can just put the screws on. That way you don't lose them. I'm just going to take all these off, and we're going to see what pickups are in this thing. I wonder what they are. I don't, I don't recognize what they, what they are. They might just be the stock pickups. The only reason I think these aren't stock pickups, just for you guys who are still watching, this bridge was replaced. These saddles are not the saddles that came with it. These are um, CG. These are marked CG. They should be marked Fender. I, th I can't remember what CG stands for, but they make, uh, I think it's Callahan maybe. But uh, yeah, those are good bridge saddles. They're nice and low. And also, the person who had this before did something really weird, which I appreciate, but I would never personally do it. That is... He did something with the back of the guitar, too. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's up with that. So we'll see if these are the stock pickups or not. But I do like them. I don't like the bridge pickup, though. The bridge pickup's kind of weak. As far as bridge pickups go, it's kind of, eh. So are you guys uh, still doing okay out there? I know this is a little boring, me just taking screws out of the guitar. But is this, is this interesting to you guys? You guys think this is fascinating? We're doing guitar surgery in the studio. Also, I think that this was, um, I think this was modified because some of these screws aren't placed all the way in. Like this one right here, all, you guys can't see it probably, but there's a screw that's not quite in. And that tells me that, that somebody was uh, opened this up to do some replacement stuff. So at least that's what I think happened. I don't know for sure. So, I'm not a big, do you, let me know if you guys like the cream. See these cream white, and this is like a little off-white as well. This looks like milk. This looks like cream. And then this, this is just pure white. I think it should just be white, white, and then the, the Olympic white. But, yeah, I'll probably change these pickup covers right after I get this off. So, there we go. There we go. We got, we got 11 screws. Most fenders have 11 screws. They used to have, I think, only nine or eight. And then what happens sometimes, just so you guys know, is the pick guard, sometimes it'll warp. So they had to put more screws in it to stop it from warping. Isn't that funny? So, like, after years and years of being in, like, smoky bars and the sunlight hitting it and, you know, changing the plastic, not if you ever seen an old car... Not everything's built to last. Like stuff can just, just because from existing, it can have problems. So, all right, everybody, moment of truth. Here we go. We're going to take the pick guard off. We're going to see what it looks like under there. Here we go. Three. Oh, wait, do we have wait, one more, one more, one more. Sorry. I knew that was going to happen. I was like, I bet you I'm going to count off and I'm going to screw up. We got one more. For those of you counting at home, that should be 11. All right, here we go. Three, two. One, let's see it! 
These are not the stock pickups. I was right. Am I a genius? Chat, am I a genius or what? I'm a genius. I'm so smart. What's up with this? Oh my God, it has a push pull pot. I didn't know that. Yo, this guy modified it. Good job. All right, so you're probably thinking, Pat, how do, how do you tell these aren't the uh, stock pickups? Let me tell you, folks at home, this is how smart I am. I'm a genius. Tell your friends. So there were two things that made me think this is not stock. One, the pickups, the actual magnets, these guys right here, these little circles, these dots, notice how they're not all the same like height. That is called staggered. See how this one, this is where the B string is? That's like under the pick guard or under the plastic, see? And the one right next to it's way above it. They don't typically do that on stuff that they don't like. Like that's a good, that's a good sounding pickup. Here's what's interesting. My newest Strat that's actually from this year does have staggered pickups. They are staggered, but not by a lot, but they are staggered. So I was like, hmm, I wonder if this is a custom shop. My American Strat does have staggered pickups. So I was like, okay, cool. Number two, here's the other thing, and this is what confirmed it. Now, they sound pretty good too. I like them. That bridge pickup, I think I just need to lower the neck pickup. But anyways, here's the other thing. Look at the, uh, look at the actual um, stickers on them. Now, you could get fake stickers. That's possible. But they say custom shop. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can move the camera. But it says custom shop. These are little stickers on them. So... Yeah, so apparently, apparently, somebody bought some really nice pickups and stuck them in this guitar. So these pickups are probably between $200 and $300 alone. The guitar, I, I, this was 500 a little less than 500 bucks when I bought it, which is a pretty fair price. So the second thing that made, or the third thing that made me think these were custom shop pickups before opening it up, besides the sound, besides the staggered things, uh, is the fact that it had cream-colored pickup covers. That's why I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't think they came with cream. I think they were just white. So that means somebody did something to it. Also, here's something else fascinating. Oh, let me turn this down a little more. See this, like, copper? Looks like a penny. That's called copper shielding. That's supposed to help. It doesn't completely eliminate it. That's supposed to help with uh, noise. See, single coil pickups are really special because they're super clear, they're super clean. The problem though is, is that they hear everything. So if you have a light bulb near you, if you're near um, an outlet, it will hear those electronic devices and it'll go through the pickup. So the, the different, here's the, here's the idea. They're so clear, they're so crystalline that they pick up things they're not supposed to. That's the problem with single coils. I don't typically like single coils in the bridge, and I don't usually like them in the net in the middle. I love them in the neck. They're perfect for the neck. But I don't usually like them in those positions. So if you notice, most of my guitars have a humbucker in the bridge, which is exactly what I'm going to do to this later. I'm going to put a humbucker in the bridge. I'm going to keep these, these pickups, though. I do like them. Um, and then this is cool, too, that whole... That whole uh, Push pull pot, but anyways, we'll we'll get to that later. But uh, yep, so we took the 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 bridge pickup or we took the pick guard off. We checked out the pickups. I was right; these look like custom shop pickups. I'm not sure which ones they are, uh, but they look like it. They look like uh, I'm gonna say they're like cust like um, fat fifties or something like that. I don't know. But all right, that's pretty interesting. I was right. I feel so smart, dude. So we're gonna put this back on. So that way we're not just having this thing flying around. But if you notice, it's, this was all easy. How long did it take us? It took us 20 minutes to do from, from the um, restring part to the taking off the pick guard and the neck to check out what's in there. Fascinating, huh? Here we go. 
I'm, oh, wait, let me put it down a little bit. There we go. Isn't that cool? Pretty cool. I'm so glad that was right. If it wasn't Custom Shop, I would have been like, I'm not a guitar player, dude. I'm dumb. But the joke is, is you shouldn't doubt yourself. You should be like, I'm absolutely certain that this is what it is. But that's just, that's just how a guitar goes. It just goes to show, like, you could have 20 years of experience buying, selling, getting guitars, playing them, and you'll still be like, I don't know if this is as good as I think it is. So that's why I always say, it doesn't matter. Go play it, and if you like it, you like it. So, yeah, yeah, but this definitely sounds a lot better than my American Strat, which is hilarious, because it was less than, it was a quarter of the price. Fender Mexico is no joke, dude. And I get these are custom shop pickups, but everything else plays phenomenally on it. So I'm just going to put one screw back on there. That way we can uh, not have it flying around. And I'm going to get the uh, screws that I placed in a cup that I did not have loose on my table because I didn't want to lose them. And I'm going to put them in a different cup over there. So... Does anyone have questions about guitar pickups and all that other stuff? Anyone have any? I know this is more equipment than like playing wise, but I figured, you know, if nobody has any questions and I want to see what's in there anyways, it's a good learning moment, you know? I'm going to grab the rest of the guitar. I'm going to pull it over here. I'm going to put it out of the way where it needs to go. There we are. Cool. Heck, I could probably sell those pickups for like quite a bit of money. That's funny. Get my money back. Uh, but you guys don't have any questions? Nobody has anything they want to say? Because now what we can do is and before anybody says it, yes, I left the other screws and the neck plate over here. So, You guys want to learn how to play a song? You guys want to learn how to do – you guys want an exercise? Basically, it's just Everett at this point. <laughs> Sid, I know you're in here, but this is more like the playing part of the, uh, the thing. So, Everett's like, I'm checked out, bro. Dude, I love these guitars so much. I mean, I'll just listen to you play if nothing else. Okay, Sid, no problem. Uh, I'll teach you guys, Everett, is there a song you're trying to learn right now or you're listening to and you're like, I want to play this? Let me know. Because I'll just tell you an uh, exercise that you can do. I think Everett might have left, Sid. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Everett says, I'm all good. What are you practicing right now, Everett? Let me ask you that. And then, Sid, you said you're going to get a guitar. Are you going to buy one from the, uh, the links in that video that I have where I have all my equipment? You should. It'll help out. Helps out the show tremendously. You'll get exactly what I recommend. But I do recommend going to a store. Go to a store and see what speaks to you. That's my advice. But if you want, if you're like, ah, I just want to know what you use, check out that video that's linked in my bio. Right now I'm just practicing improv for jazz band. Interesting, jazz. You like jazz? I hate that joke. Let's see here. Jazz, improv, backing track. Let's see if I can do something for you. Let me know if you can hear the the guitar in the video. Or the backing track. Can you guys hear this? You can hear it? All right, so what I like to do is try and figure out what the key is. Usually with backing track videos, they'll tell you what key it's in, but I'm going to see if I can figure it out.
So I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint, Everett. I'll give you a hint. If you ever are playing something and you're like, ooh, I hit the wrong note, ooh, all you got to do is either go one fret or two frets in one direction and you're fine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what key, what song, you're one or two frets away from the right note. I'll play a wrong note. That's definitely not in the key. But this is right. This, and this is right. I was one fret away. Also, context matters. But I'll tell you this, instead of me just jamming, the whole idea there is you can figure out what notes work, and then you can visualize in your head after a little bit on the fretboard. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So check this out. So the the backing track is telling me I'm not I'm not this not this good. It says it's in the key of C, and it's Ionian. Ionian is what is called a mode. If you don't know anything about modes, the idea is you have a scale. For example, you have the uh, major scale. All of the notes that are in the major scale are like, these sound good. We like this. So the idea is, is if you play the major scale and you step out of that scale, watch this. That note, that's not there. That's not supposed to be there. What's going on there? So, yeah, so you want to stay in that. A mode is basically a scale within a scale. What's that? So everything has, a, like, a specific order to it. I'm not going to get into this too much because I'm not well-versed. I know what it is, but I don't know what the actual terminology is. So, But the idea is, is you can figure out where you're at in the scale and the mode. I'll give you another example. Um, the idea is, is I have a song, self self promotion. Uh, I have a song that's in Lydian, I think. I think it's in D Lydian, and it's the, uh, I use it a lot. There's a lot of songs I play that have the Lydian mode, so that's the rule. It's like, all right, everybody, you have to play these notes, but mainly these notes. That's what it means. So, so you got that. <laughs> Like under most most scales like this, doesn't work. That's not cool. But in the Lydian mode, it works. So. But uh, I write a lot of songs. I have. Um, America's Most Unwanted, same notes. And then watch this. Oh, sorry. Does any did you guys know what song that is? That's pork and beans from Weezer. Same mode, same key. Then there's another song. I use a lot of that. I Same notes. See, you can do a lot with a little. I feel, in my opinion, limitation is one of the best ways to get creative. 
taking things away, moving things away from you. Oh, you can't play these notes now. It's like, oh, okay. That's a good way to get creative. Now, the question is, did I do that on purpose and remove those notes and be like, I can't play these? No, I didn't. But sometimes people do that. But the idea is when you're writing, when you're playing in modes and music for improvisation, the idea is that while you're playing, you'll hear, you'll feel, oh, I think I'm only going to play these notes. And then you'll figure out what goes with that. I don't know. I'll figure. You can look it up. What is what what key am I in? What scale am I in? What what mode am I in? Look it up, and then you'll be like, put your notes in the machine, and then it spits it out. You should be able to know it, but you know it's easier just to be like, machine, tell me what scale I'm in. But for this song, for example, that we're doing the jazz stuff to, I know it's in C Ionian, so I know that it's gonna. Whoops. Oh, sorry. That's it. I was on the wrong fret a couple times. But yeah, so C Ionian it only it's it's only this. Whoops. Is it really that? Okay, hold on. That's a weird scale. I don't like this thing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm going one for up too much. Everybody at home's like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You're right. the same uh, scale and mode as I want to rule the world from Coldplay. Dun, 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 dun. Let me look that up. Coldplay. Uh, what is that song called? Viva. What is it? Viva La Vida. Uh, scale. It's an F minor, so it's not quite what we're doing. And then I'll look up mode. Is it Ionian? F minor. Okay. So you can just look this up. Is it in is it an Ionian? I don't know what it is. You know what you want to hear something really funny? It's probably gonna be this is a hot take. I find that the people that know the most about music theory are the ones that transcribe it. And the ones that know not as much notation are the ones that are writing it, if that makes sense. <laughs> They're the, the ones who write the, write the, the ones who tell the stories are the ones that don't speak the language as well as other people. I mean, they do, but you know what I mean. They, they know less about what it's, it's actually the cooks don't know why the food is tasty. They just know it is. Does that make sense? You don't, ha you don't have to know what's in ham to make it. You know, you're just like, I think this is good. I put this together because I know it tastes good. And all the people are like, oh, my God, this is so smart, blah, blah, blah. Like the Beatles, they knew what they were doing. If you just said, hey, Beatles, write this out. Tell me what chords these are. They'd be like, I don't know, dude. I just think this sounds cool. So anyways, but uh, all right, everybody watching at home. Uh, I basically went off on a bunch of tangents for Everett, but the best way to learn improvisation, learn the scale, learn the uh, mode, and just dance around. And if you make a note that's wrong, you're one or two frets away from the right one. So go do that. And then just feel it. If you want to go up, go up. If you want to go down, go down. If you want to go sideways, go sideways. Feel it. Got to think about it. Don't think about it too much. Just go, you know, I think this sounds good. Rule of cool. The rule of cool. If it sounds cool, it is. Doesn't matter why. So that's for the uh, that's for the people who study music theory to figure out later. <laughs> but we're just I'm just playing it. I don't need to know. 
But anyways, uh, I'm going to stop the recording there. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos of uh, – if you want to see me in person, really, make sure you show up on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Make sure you're subscribed to any of the Patreon or TikTok or whatever. We'll help you out. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Stay gnarly.